So hello and welcome to Just The Way It Is. My name's Carl and this is part three and today we're going to be talking about brakes. Now, brakes on the Multistrada, uh, especially on the forums, is one of those topics where there's a lot of people talking a lot of utter nonsense. So if you've watched part one, you'll know that uh, I'm a fully trained, qualified technician, mechanic. I've been working on cars and motorbikes for over 30 years. Uh, I've had factory training from Lucas, the girling manufacturers, and although I'm not gonna say I'm an expert, I know what I'm talking about. And a lot of the stuff that's talked about on the forums about the things that you should or you need to do with the brakes to make things better is just nonsense. So the first thing we need to cover is the brakes on the Multistrada all the way through from the 2010 right the way up to the 1260. The standard braking systems are brilliant. They're really, really good. And as long as they're maintained and serviced and set up correctly, unless you're going really, really fast uh, and you ride like a racer on the road or you do track days, you really don't need to do an awful lot. The biggest problem, and it, it applies to motorbikes and to, and to cars, is contamination. Especially buying, when you're buying a used bike, you've really got no idea what the owner before you has done, how the bike's been maintained, and when people clean their bikes, they use the wrong materials, uh, they get the wrong products, and if you get contamination uh, between the discs and the pads, and they're even ever so slightly contaminated, you're gonna make things worse. And so what I'm gonna cover in this video is what to check and the things you need to look for, and then later on I'll talk about the upgrade route, the upgrading route you can do. I mean, if you are a very fast rider and you're happy going really fast on the road, there is a sequence of things to do, um, but you don't need to start changing calipers straight away, you don't need to start changing discs straight away or master cylinders. There's a lot you can do to the standard system to make sure it's working correctly, and when it works correctly, they're very good. There is an Achilles heel, a, a, a common problem across the first three, 2010, 2012, the twin spark version, which this is, and the DVT, and that's the rear brake. But when we get to the rear brake in a moment, I'm gonna explain what the problem is and the things that you can do to make things better. It's gonna take a little bit of work, but I'm gonna explain what you need to do. Now, brakes themselves are the single most important system on your bike. So I, I thought long and hard about this and I have done some how-to instructions for different forums for other vehicles that I've had, um, but I'm not gonna do it for the Multistrada. I really do think that if you're gonna have a bike like this that goes this quick, you really need to know what you're doing if you're gonna work on your brakes. So this is not a how-to. This is gonna be how to check, the things you need to look at, and then you can decide for yourself whether this is a job for you, or ideally give it to your dealer or a professional to make sure it's right. So let's get started, and uh, I'll start on the front and I'll do some explanations. So in making this video, I made lots of little video clips. Um, and once I put them all into the editing software, I was shocked. <laughs> I was shocked to see that the total video time was an hour and 20 minutes. And there's no way you guys are gonna sit through an hour and 20 minutes of me talking about breaks. So I've had to remove quite a bit of content to make the video even the length that it is now. So what have I removed? Well. What I decided to do was to remove the video clips that I'd made that are already available on other channels on YouTube. So let me give you a couple of examples so you understand what I've removed. So cleaning of the brake pads. There's good videos on there. The video I made was six minutes, I've removed it. The cleaning of the brake discs or the brake rotors. That was another eight minute video that I felt I didn't really need to have because if you put it into the search, uh, bar on YouTube, there's lots of good videos. Um, another example is the brake fluid flush or the brake fluid change. My video was 18 minutes telling you where to start, what to do, in which order to do things. And again, there's really no point. Um, there's an exceptionally good video uh, on a channel called Canyon Chasers. I'll put a link in the description to blow, blow. They have a fairly lengthy video, I think it's about 30 minutes, but they cover in detail 
how to change the brake fluid on your Multistrada and there really isn't any, any point me replicating or duplicating that and making this video even longer. So let's move on. Remove and take off. The pads are equally easy to get out and you're going to need to clean everything in warm soapy water. And then you need to make sure that this surface, we start with the brake discs, is also clean. So to complete this cleaning process you're going to need three things. Uh, the first thing is aluminium oxide sanding paper. Ideally you need two types. 500 grit which you're going to use for cleaning the brake pads and 1500 grit for cleaning the brake discs. The discs end up with um, old brake material bonded to the disc and you need to sand that down with a very gentle circular motion. Uh, the second thing you're going to need is brake cleaner, probably a couple of tins of sprayable brake cleaner. Now the third thing, look at the picture above, press the pause button and read the information. This information is really important. The lubricant you choose and the lubricant that you use to free off those pistons is utterly, totally vital that you use the right stuff. Uh, as you can see on the image above, I've put some part numbers up for you so you can buy these. Uh, I think Amazon even has them and they have both the old and the new type. It's the same stuff in the, both the tubes. Now don't think that you can guess and choose a different product from a different manufacturer because you have to be really careful because the lubricant you use must not have a detrimental effect on the seals but at the back of the pistons. I've been using this stuff for, I, I don't know, 15, 20 years and prior to that it was a red rubber grease that we used to use. But the stuff that you can see on the screen is what I've been using for a long time and it does not cause any problems. Now, let's look at the next image. Now on here, again, you can pause it and have a read. But what I want to explain in a little bit of detail is you can see on all four pistons there looks like to be an excess of lubricant on those pistons. But this is just before I start the freeing off process. So you need to put a small amount on each piston, work it all the way around the surface with your finger, and then you're going to move those pistons in and out, backwards and forwards, until those pistons move really freely in and out. And I think I've explained it already in the video. What you're looking for is the uniform movement of all four pistons in and back at the same time. This is what you're looking for. This is what you're aiming for. So once this cleaning process and the lubrication process is complete, I'll put up another image now. Now on this image, you can see um, the pistons are fully retracted or fully pushed back into their ports, their holes and that there is no excess lubricant. You need to make sure that the inside of your calibers look like this. They need to be spotless. You need a, a lint-free rag. You're going to need some of the, use some of the brake cleaner, spray it onto the lint-free rag and clean the inside of your calipers and remove off any excess. Inside. Now, the thing you have to be really careful about with these particular calipers is there's not a lot of travel, there's not a lot of free travel with those pistons inside. Once you take that caliper off the disc and you take these pads out, you must not press the brake lever. Those pistons will pop out very, very easily. Once they pop out and fluid comes out and air gets in, you, you're gonna have to bleed the whole system and you've, you've basically let air get in there, which will create more problems. So this really is a job for someone that knows what they're doing and they've got the correct tools to be able to bleed the system afterwards. The cleaning you can do, but if you have any problems or you have any doubts about these pistons. Now, because there's four pistons inside, if you imagine that that is that they are the four pistons, when you press the brake lever, they should both, they should both sides, all four pistons, move uniformly in. When you take your hand off of the brake lever, they move back a very, very small amount. But what you're looking for is that all four pistons move in uniformly. Now, the first time I took these apart and had a look, I had one piston only, just one that was working in and out at gentle pressure, and the other three, they weren't seized, but they were stuck. Um, and the only way you could get them to, to move in and out was press harder on the brake pedal, on the brake lever, but what you want is an, a balance of all four pistons moving in and out uniformly at the same time. So there's quite a bit of cleaning to do. So if you can get these calipers 
clean, free, and the pistons moving freely and uniformly. Your brake discs are clean, there's no, <coughs> there's no contaminants on there. And your brake pads are also in a good condition, ideally fit some new ones. It will make a big difference to the brakes on the front of your bike. Now these are the standard um, Brembo Ducati OEM pads. Um, you can fit alternatives. There, there is a limit to what this setup can cope with. If you really pick up the pace, you eventually, after a lot of hard braking, end up with, um, the best way to describe it, is a wooden feeling front brake. You get to the point where there just isn't any more to come, no matter how hard you pull that brake lever. And on the forums, they tell you you need to change the calipers and stick M50s, which you have to do a modification because the mounting point on here for the fluid lines is in a different place. It comes out the side, so you also need to change the, um, the brake fluid lines. However, what you can do is upgrade your brake pads. Um, EBC do some really nice ones. Um, these came out this year, 2021. Um, these are the Brembo SR pads. They've only been out, I think they came out in March. Um, I've got them in here and they're, they're really good. However, when you start fitting racing brake pads, you change uh, the temperature range at which the brakes work. So <clears throat> with the OEM pads, you can set off cold in the morning and your brakes will work fine. Um, you know, 10 degrees, early spring or autumn, and your brakes are still gonna work okay, and they'll work all the way through the summer, and you'll get consistent braking through a wide temperature range. When you change to a, a racing brake pad like these, these are the SRs, um, what you do is you change that working temperature range. And what I found is that for the first mm, three or 400 kilometers, I was not impressed with them. Um, they take quite a bit of time to bed in. Obviously, there's going to be some wear on your brake disc and your new pads have to um, bed in and basically wear to the shape of the brake disc. We're talking very, very small margins, points of millimetres, you know, a tenth of a millimetre, a fiftieth of a millimetre, that sort of thing. But it takes some time for the pads to bed in. But the, it's the temperature range that causes the problem. Now, if I'm riding at traffic speed, normal traffic speed, these pads are not very good. They feel quite dead, and there's, if you pull the lever hard, the bike stops, it's not dangerous, but they're not brilliant. And in that situation, the standard OEM pads are much, much better. However, when the pace picks up, uh, or you're riding with a faster group, once these get warm, they are so much better than the original pads, but you need to get them warm. So what I find is in, in spring, when I first fitted them, um, 10, 12 degrees, it takes me 15, 20 minutes of riding uh, with braking on and off for these to come up to temperature. And once this, the setup, once your tires are warm, your, your discs and your calipers and your pads are warm, they work really, really well. And when you start to push on and you're going that bit faster, um, you don't have that dead wooden feeling that you do with the original pads. So that's an option you can take with the front brakes. So after that, if you upgrade your brake pads and you still want more from your braking system, we're gonna talk about the rear in a moment, then obviously you've gotta look at changing, um, upgrading your caliper with your um, brake lines and then possibly changing your brake discs. And there are lots of things you can do, but to come back to my original point, most of the, the cars and the bikes I work on where people come in with brake problems, it's all down to contamination. People cleaning their bikes, using the wrong chemicals, the wrong materials, spraying stuff around here, not paying attention, and you've only got to get a bit of silicon spray on these brake discs and go for a ride, and you've ruined a set of pads and you've got to clean everything. I can't emphasize this enough. It really makes a huge difference having these contamination free. Make sure this surface and your pads are spotlessly clean. There's no contamination. You've only got to do it once thoroughly when you buy the bike, when, once it's yours. And then you can make sure when you clean your bike and you're spraying and you're polishing, put a rag or an old cloth or an old bed sheet over your brakes when you're doing the cleaning of your bike. You cannot get 
anything on these. The discs or the pads, you'll knacker them, you'll ruin them, and it really is very easy to make a mistake. So I hope that helps. So we now get to the last section, which is um, to talk through the Brembo brake pads and specifically the compounds. Um, and instead of you looking at me while I'm talking to you at the same time, I thought it'd be much more informative to actually put some slides up to help you understand the different compounds because it's not easy to establish what it is that you might like to choose for your Multistrada. So on the very first screen, we've got the uh, OEM or the Ducati um, supply brake pads. Um, you can see the part numbers for the front pads and the part number for the rear pads. If you go to your dealer and they tell you you need new brake pads, front or rear, this is what they're going to fit. Now there's nothing really wrong with the original equipment Ducati pads. But the, the thing you need to understand is that when Ducati worked with Brembo to create a brake pad front and rear for the Multistrada, it had to work on such a huge range of different environments, different temperature ranges um, from the Northern Hemisphere, Northern America, Canada, Northern Europe, uh, where it can be very cold, um, to Asia where it's very humid and very wet, to Central Europe where it rains a lot like in the UK, and the southern climates where it's nice and warm and can get very hot. Also the, um, the conditions like dust have to be taken into account. And then in addition to all of that, the pad has to work for a wide range of users. So there's no point a customer driving out of a Ducati dealer um, and getting 500 yards down the road, pulling a handful of front brake and going straight over the handlebars because they're performance pads. Ducati would have a lawsuit on their hands. Um, and the same goes for a customer that sets off in one or two degrees on a rainy day in London. He's got to get across town because he's going to work. He uses his bike to commute. His brakes need to work from the moment he pulls out his drive. So it's a compromise. All the way through, it is a compromise. So that's the, the catty pad, but there is a lot of places, a, a, lot, a lot that you can do to improve it. So going to the second page, um, I'm going to call this stage one just to make it easier to understand. Um, so the Brembo LA pad. Now this is a very good pad. You would, should really consider this as a replacement for the, the, the standard Ducati brake pad on the front. Now the question is, have I used this on my own bike? The answer is no. However, I have worked on, apart from my own Motistrada, I've done two customer bikes. Um, the same process with changing the fluid, getting the air out of the rear, adjusting the, um, the rear brake pedal travel, um, and sorting out the sticky pistons in the calipers, which is a really common problem. So this particular customer, um, he was really honest from the get-go. He doesn't ride fast. He doesn't go on tour. He'd had the bike from new one owner, um, and all he felt was that the rear brake was it got pretty useless, which it had, uh, and that the front felt like it was kind of sticking, grabbing. He wasn't really sure how to describe it, so we had a look. So if you do all of the things that I've covered in this video and what's going to come in the part two, which is the rear brakes, you can fix most of the problems. So what we decided to do with his bike was fit these LA pads, and they're actually really good. And they are a step up from the standard Ducati pad. They're going to give you a little bit of performance improvement, but they're going to give you excellent mileage. Very, very similar to the standard Ducati pad. So if you're a commuter and you use your bike throughout the whole year in a whole range of temperatures and conditions, these are a really great pad. And uh, I would recommend them. So we're going to move on to the third screen. So um, again, for simplification purposes, we're going to call this stage two. And this is the Brembo SA front pad. Um, the SA uh, is, as far as I'm aware, only designated for a front brake application. Um, and you would consider it a performance brake pad. It is not to be used on the racetrack. You might get an odd small session out of these pads, but they're really not that sort of thing. So uh, in what application would you use these? Well, these are really for um, people that are experienced, accomplished, um, and they're a quick rider. Uh, or someone that does um, quite a lot of touring, someone that goes two up, or they go with 
all their panniers and top boxes and bag strapped to the back and they've got quite a bit of weight on the back um, and they're going through the Alps or through the mountains where you've probably experienced at some point in your time with your Multistrada this dead wooden feeling that you sometimes get from the front brake when you're kind of at the end of its capabilities. Now if you've experienced that even the once you're probably the sort of rider that's ready to move up in terms of performance to this sort of pad. So this is the SA. Now, have I had any experience of this on my own bike? No. However, the second customer's bike that I did, he actually came to me uh, via a recommendation and he wanted a quote for changing the brake calipers on the front of his bike to M50s. So what I did, I got him to come along on a Saturday morning and we went for a 20 minute ride just for me to get a feel and a look at what kind of rider he was. And he was a quick rider, but at no point did I think he needed M50 brakes because it's a big outlay. You're talking really a minimum of 500 euros, dollars, pounds for a set of uh, new calipers. Then you need um, the new brake uh, fluid lines and it's quite a bit of work to do. And so the bill would have been quite substantial. So what we agreed to do uh, with this chap's bike was to do the same as what we've talked about earlier with the, the maintenance, the freeing off of the pistons, uh, but we decided to try the SA pads. Now, when I did this bike, I didn't have a YouTube channel and I wasn't interested in recording anything really. Um, and if I could have a video of the smile on his face when he took his crash helmet off, when he came back from his road test, he was such a happy bunny because it, it really transformed his bike. Um, so this is a really good place if you're a quick rider and you don't do track days. So let's move on to the next slide. So this is what we're going to call stage three. This is the Brembo SR, and this is the replacement for the original SC. Now the SC was out, has been out for many, many years, uh, and a lot of people with, with race road bikes uh, or hypersport bikes use in the front of their um, calipers. Um, they can be a really good brake pad. They're really intended for very fast road use or track use, track days, that sort of thing. Um, now there's a bit of disinformation about these on the internet. These are the pad that I actually have fitted to my Multistrada. Uh, and you've probably seen from the video earlier on and in a page next, yet to come, um, there is a problem with these. And that is when they're not hot um, and they, they lose temperature, they don't work all that well. You still don't have, you don't have faulty brakes, you don't have brakes that don't work, um, but the, the, the performance drop-off is really quite significant because they're meant as a track day pad. So if I was honest, and if I had known this from reading the forums in the first place, I probably wouldn't have fitted the SR or the SE pad. I would probably have fitted the SA pad from the previous screen. Now the reason is, what I end up having to do is, for the vast majority of the time, it's fine as long as you are aware of having to keep temperature in your brakes and you have to give it time to warm up they're fine and they do perform really really well when these are hot they are another step up from the SA pad which we've just talked about however uh, for me when I go on tour and I'm with a mixed ability group these pads are no good I actually have to remove them and I refit the original Ducati pad because the operating temperature range is much lower and so they perform they give a, a good even performance across a, across a wide rating, ranging temperature so I actually fit the original pads when I go on tour with our bike club because there's, there's no point having race pads in so let's move on to the very last screen and this really is just to reiterate um, be very careful choosing the SR or the SC pad it can be if you're a fast rider and you take your bike on track, it can work really well for you. Um, but don't be led astray with what everyone says on the forums because they, they do say they're a great pad. But what they don't tell you is that when these things get cold, they're pretty awful. They're pretty poor. So my suggestion uh, would be look at the slides that we've just talked through and really decide between the LA or the SA pad. 
Um, and yeah, I hope that helps. Uh, there's a lot of information there. Uh, you can obviously pause the screens and read some more. So thank you very much for watching. The uh, next video is going to be uh, the rear brakes, the rear brake pedal adjustment, and obviously choosing pads uh, for the rear of your Multistrada. So thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video.